was telling Mita that this whole uh, nativity set was by Joseph, Josefina Aguilar, and David gave it to me for Christmas one year, a long time ago. Uh, I think it's a real treasure. Oh, you know, she's just fabulous. She has a sister that does the same thing, but it's not nearly as good. You can tell the difference, it's not good. And the painting, I was taking a Bible course about 30 years ago, and in Genesis, it said that uh, uh, Noah was a tiller of the soil, and that just knocked me out because he was a farmer. And so I didn't know what a boat looked like or, or an ark, and so I just kind of made that up. And when I paint, I have the central idea, but then all these other people come in, and the animals and the kids up, have been climbing around. And then these, these figures down here, the wooden ones, they're the oldest and probably the most valuable, actually. And they were some of my earliest collections. Um, they're cruder than the ones you see now. These are from, I guess they're camels, are from India. And I think it's amazing how all, nearly all the folk art, except for things that come from maybe Africa, there's are usually more subtle colors. But they all kind of blend together, I think. Uh, there's, it's kind of like a seamless sort of collective idea about it. I think they're all joyful. That's the main thing to me about folk art is how much joy they had making it and how much joy I have owning it. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, my son and daughter-in-law both enjoy it, and uh, my grandkids do, so I feel like it has a future. <laughs> With them, it's not going to just fade away. These camels over here, uh, Mita was asking where they're from. They're from um, from Israel, I think, and it's real leather that covers them. For instance, this little piece right here, Pier One, at Christmas, and these little things, which have faded, but they still kind of blend in, and I've used. Um, I inherited a bunch of junk jewelry from one of David's aunts that died. So I've put various things on there. Uh, I had the most fun putting that together. Anyway, I love these camels. I love camels. Maybe four or five years ago, I guess, um, my friend Ed Jordan called me one day and said that there were two sisters in the town over there, San Marcos, uh, whose mother had died and she had been uh, uh, selling folk art from Mexico and they were getting rid of everything in the garage and did I want to go over there and look at the stuff and so I said of course and we got over there and it was one of those one car sheds like a butler building and it was just crammed with stuff just junk but then I got looking at everything, and this piece right here, I think it's so fabulous, was over there. That was one thing. And I saw the crucifixion, and I, I didn't get it. And I don't know why I didn't get it, but I kept thinking about it on the way back. So the next day, we went back over there, and I got it. And all of these things they were selling for just small amounts of money. It was just amazing. I just wanted to buy everything. This crucifixion, I thought it was just, as you said, Mita, awesome. Absolutely incredible. And I've decorated the back of it with um, things that a friend moved out of Austin and she left a whole bunch of, of fabric and stuff. Uh, and the cards were in her pile of things. Anyway, I just made it an altar. I have altars all over the house. One friend said that my house just had little altars everywhere, <laughs> which it does. I like doing altars. These are puppets, which I don't know how to, to do, but anyway, from India. <laughs> and I think they're just fun. Um, 
I have these and these and these. <laughs> And I think it's all, it's so interesting to me that they all, like I said, go together. I mean, the colors from Mexico go with the colors from India. That's, that was fabric that a friend years ago brought back from Africa, right? And um, her husband had been some kind of official or something in Ghana, and uh, she brought that back the hinted cloth. Um, and then I have several umbrellas. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, I didn't know what to do with the umbrellas, but I couldn't resist. My daughter-in-law gave me one. I have several of these things. They're from India. Um, they have turtles, and I don't know what, these are turtles. The uh, banana trees are from Indonesia, and I have this big one, and then a, two or three smaller ones, and you can't find those anymore because they had the tsunami in Indonesia. I've forgotten what year that was, but none of that is coming out of there anymore. So if, if I see something, I don't shop much anymore, but my policy's been if I see something, I <laughs> better get it. Um, I think these are just wonderful. David gave me all these boats, but the intricacy, these are skeleton dog and a skeleton guy, but the, the detail is just so charming. I think they're just so cute. This one has the little guy that hangs on the side. <laughs> He's trying to get in. I think he's just lovely. I love that color. These Guatemalan men, I think, are so extraordinary. They came from the flower bucket that over on Lamar. And uh, I walked in and saw them, and I just, my heart stopped. I thought they were so <laughs> incredible. I couldn't believe it. And again, they were a bargain <laughs> in my mind. I thought they were almost priceless. I just thought they were just incredible. I use them at um, uh, Christmas and Epiphany because they're, I pretend that they're the three kings, even though they're from right. Guatemala. These things came from India. This is, I think, charming a boat. Um, this piece of textile is from India, and I like it so, so much because they've got the little mirrors on it. I have several purses. I don't know, maybe I should show the purses that have mirrors all over them. Um, I've been collecting these. I have several pieces of these. I just, I just think the, the handwork is just so, so touching. <laughs> Again, the colors blend in with the Mexican things and the Guatemalan things. It's just, uh, it's just fun, I think. There's so much joy in the folk art. I just, uh, and then this horse's head, I guess it's a horse. <laughs> I got, I think it was in a, like a yard sale that I had in somebody's collection that was for sale. Um, again, my daughter-in-law was with me and I said, well, I, I don't need another thing. And she said, the need doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> These two pieces up here my son gave to me. They're from India. And they may have some uh, meaning. I don't know what it is. A lot of these things, I don't know the background. I just know that they touch my heart. Coretta by Jesus Calva. It says it's inspired Penitente, the death carts. Anyway, I think she's just hauntingly good. She's got real horse hair braids. Oh, wow. And she's got the devils helping to carry the cart. Uh, flames from Hades, I suppose. Anyway, she's just, she's decorated. The whole thing is just uh, extraordinary, I think. 
Well, this is the blue room, and it's amazing how you start with one thing, like one color, and uh, it, you just keep adding to it, which these little birds, I think, are so charming. They came from, was it Charles Lewis? Anyway, I went in one day and I bought up all the little blue birds that he had. I think that may have been the first blue thing. And then added the rabbit, kind of a heliotrope rabbit. Um, the uh, trees of life uh, have so many different interpretations, I think. Uh, you have Adam and Eve, you can have just almost anything. Somebody told David that I wanted some tree of life somewhere. And uh, he went, he got this one and it was not the one <laughs> that I had asked for, but I, I like it anyway. And then you have angels and you have La Serena who has real red hair. Greek churches up here, I made nine of them one year. Uh, we had been on a cruise. I had been, I'd been to Greece about three times, I guess. And it's just a different place. It's otherworldly to me. And uh, anyway, I came back with a longing for those churches. <laughs> so I made my own. Put a little dog in this tent. I think Ed Jordan gave me this one. He's got a little halo on him. And, uh, this and this one are both Josefina Aguilar's. And you can see the detail that mm. she does that nobody else does. And the colors are so rich. Um, this one that has a <laughs> birds and Madonna and flowers. I mean, I just, they're just. Wow. Charming. Don't do that. I don't know how many years ago <clears throat> I received a great big box for my birthday. And it didn't weigh anything. I couldn't imagine what it was. And it turned out to be this head <laughs> that a friend in New York had sent me. Can you imagine buying this in New York? Anyway, I have a smaller yellow one. I had seen it and my daughter-in-law had bought it for me several years before that. But I think it's just amazing that they can, I run out of adjectives for all of the things that, that I have and that I've collected, but I think this one is really unique. The size of it, the color, I love blue. I hope that my children take care of these things. Uh, it's amazing how, when you have so much stuff that you get something else, it goes with something that you already have. Uh, Years ago, uh, one of David's aunts died, and she left a trunk full of stuff. I mean, it was really miscellaneous things. And there were these, I guess they were collars on dresses. And so I've used them to, uh, just to decorate. And uh, all these things I've just collected here and there. Uh, things that are blue, <laughs> uh, these little um, the Milagros, Milagros uh -huh. yeah, and I've used all of the Milagros over there, you can look at that in a minute, uh, on the wall. I've seen them uh, covered, uh, crosses and all kinds of things, which to me it ends up being kind of tacky, not sure this is right, that they're, they're in thanksgiving for something that has happened, like you see a, a leg or a heart or some other piece and I think it, that they, uh, they use them just as a thanksgiving for a blessing. One thing to point out in this room is the Madonna that I bought on the sidewalk at UT probably 50 years ago, I guess. And they had this, and there's a crucifixion behind you over there. Uh, they were selling these things like they used to do. I don't know if they still do that at UT, where they have things out on the sidewalk for sale. Probably not. Anyway, 
she's lasted all this time. And I guess maybe 10 years ago, we were in Mexico in Michoacan, and we went to the little village where they make these. Uh, and you know, it just, everything has a history. And it, it touches me when I can go, go to a place where something that I have was made. And uh, I just think these things are so beautiful and so intricate. The textile on the wall is from India. Dolls I got in Santa Fe, they're made by the Indians. Okay. This was the original skull that, that we started with that my daughter-in-law brought me as a surprise, which was really sweet of her. And um, in Mexico, when they do the Day of the Dead, they use marigolds a lot. And I've had this funny piece for, it's a washstand for at least 50 years. And so I've done the marigolds on, on picture frames and this mirror. Um, these little, they're actually candle holders. I use the, the flowers instead. I have a number of these. They all came from that garage in San Marcos. <laughs> The thing that I'm impressed with, they use everything. They use paper mache. I think impresses me about folk art is their humor. They, I mean, look at this guy. He's got a, <laughs> a cart, the skeleton. Uh, I've got three of those, I think. I filled this one with uh, turkey bones from many Thanksgivings ago, but I've loaded up on these paper mache um, figures. Here's one with a balloon. I just think they're funny. I mean, they must have a good time. The artists who are, who are making the things must have a really good time uh, doing it. Look at this horse. <laughs> it's a skeleton horse oh, pulling a, a, a cart with skeletons in it. Um, Here's another one of the paper mache thing. This is a whole band with a couple dancing. And if you can see their ugly little faces, <laughs> I just think they're so hilarious. Um, I bought these, I guess, in Laredo and this one. They all came sort of like as a set. Here's the, the Last Supper of all things. These little I'm not sure whether these are dogs or goats. What do you think? I think it's a dog. Has a bone in his mouth. Uh, his tail is sticking up. <laughs> Some of them are more uh, detailed than others. Uh, here's one. He's carrying a, a basket of oranges or something. He has a serape on. Uh, he's got a great face. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I think the donkeys, this poor sad thing, he's having such a hard time. <laughs> They're really crude. You don't see them like this anymore. Right. Now they have their mouths open and they're ugly. I decorate for every season and every celebration. And uh, I pull things from all over the house. My friend Kathleen Endar says that when I quit doing that, when I quit doing my altars upstairs, that she'll know I'm really on my last leg. <laughs> uh, but it gives me a lot of pleasure to do it. I just walk by in the dining room and I see that altar and it makes me feel good. Well, I was just thinking uh, how one thing leads to another. And for me, I think life has been sort of seamless. Uh, I see one thing and then the next time I see something else that connects to it, I was at a friend's house for a party, I guess, and they had, they had wonderful folk art, but they had a lot of chests. I bought this chest, which is from Zanzibar. I thought it was just, just wonderful. And this painting was from a trip to Egypt back in 1976. It was the first time I had been in the Middle East, and it just blew me away. Just a few days before I left, I went with a friend, and we went to an exhibit 
at the Blanton uh, of Egyptian children's weavings that this man whose name I should have looked up, I can't remember it, had taught these children how to weave these fabulous uh, textiles. And as you came into the Blanton, there was a big painting about this big that had a, a humpy looking thing, white, with sticks sticking out from it. It's for pigeons. We left Alexandria one morning, early, early, and we were riding along, and all these little villages had these, these humpy things, and we were the only ones who knew what, it, what, what they were. <laughs> and I just loved the shape, and they told us that uh, they use them to, to keep their butter and various things cool somehow in there. And um, anyway, the, the ground was covered with hay, I guess, for their various animals. And they were so friendly, they all waved at us in the bus. Anyway, I think all these things connect. Uh, I had a professor at the University, William Lester, and uh, after I graduated, we became friends outside of class. And uh, we were at their house one night, and I don't remember what I had on, but he said I look like my paintings. And I've, I've had other people tell me that before. And it's, it's part of that seamlessness that everything connects, um, which I think is really fun. This is my Easter altar. I have different ones. I've used uh, different color schemes. Uh, I never know what I'm going to do. Uh, this one is the first time I've used this exact layout. Um, one thing I think I've enjoyed, I inherited a whole trunk of old lace and runners and this tablecloth from Aunt Mamie Dale who lived about 97, I think. And uh, this is just a piece of the, just a piece. There's almost nothing there. But I think it's just exquisite. And these figures, I'm not sure where they come from. Um, this one is like one I saw at the Girard Museum in Santa Fe that was about this tall. and. They all have these, this blue underwear on, which I think is, is, I don't know, I guess they must have been dressed at some point. I'm thinking maybe they were used in processions, maybe the big ones, uh, and maybe on altars like I do, but they have glass eyes. I don't know if you can see her. These women don't have any arms, <laughs> so I've covered up the absence with the flowers. Um, when I put things together, I just use bits and pieces of what I think goes together. I put out these little things. I think they're like little toys that the Christ child would have used. And I've opened the door. This is like the crash. And I've opened the door to let him out for the resurrection. These are his shoes for traveling. Garlands that I've have up here. Many years ago, I was in San Antonio at a shop, and the man who owned it had taken uh, a century plant, the top part, about this, this much of it, and he had uh, braided little tiny braids of just fabric, and I thought, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and so I came home and I have braided garlands in nearly every color. I think our first trip to Mexico, to Mexico City, was probably exactly 50 years ago. We went to the Folkloric Museum in Mexico City, and uh, this was my first purchase, I guess, of folk art. And uh, it weighs a ton, but I, I got it back on Braniff Airlines in my lap, which now you would never be able to do that. And I don't think it was too long after that 
we went to a cocktail party, uh, something to do with architecture at the Charles Moore House, and I nearly had a heart attack by all the stuff that was in there. And I had, by that time, I had picked up several things, uh, pieces of folk art here and there. And I, I, because David, my husband David, is a minimalist, I had sort of hidden those things away. But after seeing the Charles Moore collection, I came home and I pulled out everything that I had. Um, anyway, obviously it has blossomed. These pieces over here, I don't know if you can get those. They came from uh, Laredo. Uh, I don't have many pieces that are, that are not colorful. But I, I, like, I like the terracotta, the, the mud colored things. Um, and they go with our Barcelona chairs, so I think it's all of a piece. The Bamboo Church is another thing that I came back. I think it was wrapped up, but it was on my lap on Brannan, good old Brannan. Um, <laughs> and the Ferris wheel, uh, one year my mother-in-law, my dear mother-in-law, asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I had seen the, the, the Ferris wheel at a place that's not there anymore. Well, the bishop, I thought it was so unique because the faces on his arms are upside down. And the young woman who owned the place, she explained that that was so that when he raises his hands to heaven, the faces would be in the right position, which I thought was just wonderful. And I like that he has the lily. I thought it was great. The, the wall with the uh, the hearts uh, started with just a, a homemade valentine. I think I've said something about my daughter-in-law and I having the same sensibilities, which I think is a real gift. Laura has been a real gift to our whole family. Um, she and I went shopping one day out on South Congress, <clears throat> and we went in a shop, a fairly large shop, and. Um, we both saw something, and uh, I grabbed her arm, and we just stood there, and we both thought we were looking at, at I thought she was looking at this piece, and she thought I was looking at another piece <laughs> next to it, and uh, anyway, which was fortunate that we didn't both like the same thing, but I just fell in love with this piece. I just think it's just... changes its uh, interior from time to time. Mm -hmm.